For today's double indie game review, we have two titles that both go over the top in very different ways. And that's going to be our reviews of Meat Grinder and Anglerfish. Meat Grinder is one of those games that dares to ask, can we add even more adrenaline to push forward combat in games like Doom Eternal and Ultra Kill? And the answer to that is, well, of course, yes. There's not much story to this game. You are along a massive convoy of vehicles, bikers and other people are trying to kill you, and you're going to have to take them out one way or another. Oh, and did I mention that your foot has a grappling hook attached to it? Because that's kind of a big deal as well. The push of our, well, push forward combat here is that as long as you're moving, shooting, and well, being active, your health will constantly regenerate, as you can see by the BPM in the bottom of the screen. Stand still or don't do anything, and your health will start to go down. You are free to use your other foot for kicking, your grapple to connect all over to other vehicles, and you will also get three dashes and kind of a slow-mo power, which I surprisingly did not use all that much. I was just too busy moving and killing. The entire game is just one ginormous adrenaline fueled rush and it is one of those titles where half the fun is just seeing what other thing can they throw at you in it. You'll gain access to different weapons, there is no persistence or upgrades or things like that. You get a new gun, that gun is yours until you beat the game. Speaking of beating the game, that is kind of like the one issue that Meat Grinder has. It is very short. It is about, I think, 16 missions, regardless of the level you play on, and then the game teases you with more content which the developer has promised will be coming soon. And that may be a little disappointing for people hoping to jump into this as a very lengthy and explosive experience, but if this chapter is any indicator, then there's definitely some high hopes for more for Me Grinder. So if you are someone who loves your shooters to be, well, very energetic and lots and lots of explosions, then this is definitely one for you to check out. And with that, we're going to take a quick break, calm down, and we'll get to a very different game when we talk about Anglerfish. But first, if you're interested in my thoughts on design, then check out my game design books. For entry level students, we have 20 essential games to study, and then the game design deep dive series that takes an extensive look at different genres with more coming soon. With Anglerfish, we have a very different kind of game here. This definitely straddles that line between an adventure game and more of an interactive art piece. And unfortunately, a lot of what that will actually entail I really can't talk about in this video without ruining the trick, but to give you some idea, if you're someone who enjoys a certain math-related game with amphibians in it, then you're going to be kind of the right audience for this. Our story starts off with us and the gang going to the bar Anglerfish for a bachelor party. Unfortunately for us, Things quickly devolve into, well, death. And as it turns out, we are now trapped in a loop. Our mission is to solve the mystery of the bar, no matter how many times we are going to die to do it. The main marketing twist of Angler Fish is that every time we die, something in the world changes. This could be a small thing, a big thing, or a weird thing. And how the game kind of creates progression, or permanent progression, is that even though you are always returned to the star of the loop after dying, if you make major progress in the game itself, areas that you've already done will either already be solved, or you will automatically skip them on your next trip. And there are tons of secrets and hidden things to find in this game. Again. A lot of the footage I'm showing you is taken from the first playthrough, but there is a lot more to uncover in this game. And a lot of fun of this one is kind of seeing just how far developers go with this unique atmosphere and structure. However, 
it does straddle that line between being a little too clever for its own good. This is one of those games where it will be all too happy to give you an instant death or just have a death trap that there's no way you would know about without stumbling upon it, which you're then supposed to use that knowledge for the next play. And the problem is that the checkpointing that the game does, sometimes it feels very, I guess, off pace. Sometimes you can complete massive areas or get certain far, but the game doesn't quite checkpoint that and you're forced to do some of the more annoying sections over again. Other times, it will just let you skip right past them, and I think the game could have done a little bit better job of, once you get through a section one time, just let them move on. And like I said, the game definitely kind of goes, or it kind of lies on that line between being more of a art piece or an experiment, and being an actual game. And this is one of those titles where you're either going to kind of jump down the rabbit hole and lean into it all the way, or you may end up getting frustrated and just quit before you even get to really see what Anglerfish has in store. So this is one of those games that can be a little tricky to recommend. If you like your games on the unusual side and that they really don't play like anything else, then I would recommend Anglerfish. But, the issues that the game has with the pacing and even with some of the controls, like your character feels like he's moving around on a roller skate sometimes, those don't go away. And you're going to have to kind of work around them if you really want to enjoy this one and see everything that it has to offer. So with that said, we're going to wrap up this double review here. I'd like to thank Meat Grinder for providing a press key. Anglerfish was played with a retail key. If you'd like me to go to your game for a future stream and video, please reach out. Do the YouTubing, liking, bell ringing, and so on. Be sure to visit our Discord and Patreon and come back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom where you summon the art and science of games.